Have to write. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much to those who are jumping on to our call. Um, we will get started in just a second. It's right on 12.30, so we'll just let a couple of more people jump in, um, and then we will kick off the session with our two alumni today. Um, so I'll just have a look at the numbers. Great. All right, so we might start off. I'm just going to start off with our acknowledgement um, to, of country. So the university acknowledges and is grateful to the traditional owners, elders and knowledge holders of all the Indigenous nations and clans who have been instrumental in our reconciliation journey. We pay respect to elders past, present and future and acknowledge the importance of Indigenous knowledge within the academy. So we'll jump straight into today's session. Um, as I mentioned, we have two of our wonderful alumni here with us today from the Faculty of Science. So we have Cecile and Zufang who will introduce themselves in just a second. So um, they are part of our alumni network and Zufang is one of our um, alumni who is on Ask Alumni as a mentor. So you can always jump on and sign up to Ask Alumni at any point as well. But I'll let the introductions um, hand over to our alumni. So Cecile, if we just start with you, do you want to just introduce yourself, tell us what you studied and what you're currently doing for work? Thanks, Ellie. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Cecile and I'd like to acknowledge that I'm joining from um, beautiful Gadigal land up in Sydney. Um, I studied a Bachelor of Science um, with a major in physiology and I did an honours um, in neuroscience. And I currently work in public health policy. So I work at the um, New South Wales Ministry of Health, working on healthy eating and active living policy. Amazing. Thank you so much. And I'll just pass over to our other alumni, Zhu Feng. Hi, I'm Zhu Feng. I'm also joining from Sydney. I studied a Bachelor of Science majoring in computing and software systems, graduated in 2019. And then after that, I joined as a grad uh, software engineer at Google, and I've been working there for almost five years. Amazing. Thank you so much. So um, today we're going to talk a little bit about um, that experience that you get before graduating and internships and the best advice that our alumni have for you today on um, how to get those internships. So Zufang, if we just start with you, we can see here that you did a um, internship at Canva as a software engineer. How did you source your internship? Was that through the university or was that through your personal networks? So for that one, I applied directly for the company's public job listing. But the thing is, it was their first time doing an internship program. So I didn't even know it existed until I learned about it from talking to another student. Yeah, fantastic. So, yeah, so I think that just shows how important it is to like get to know your other students because you learn about opportunities that way. Yeah, amazing. So you networked through your university colleagues. And did you partake in the university internship or was this outside of university? This was outside of university. Yeah, amazing. Um, and just differently from what Zufang did, Cecile participated in a research project. So Cecile, did you want to tell us a little bit about that and how that came about? Yeah, sure. So um, my research project was as a subject as part of my undergraduate and I did it at um, the University of Melbourne at one of the labs there um, and to find it I just reached out to um, lecturers that I'd had um, where I'd enjoyed their content and thought their research was interesting um, and then emailed them met with them to talk about um, potential projects that they could offer um, and then yeah that led into a project where I was looking at um, receptors in the colon of mice. So it was a very kind of lab-based project. And so you said that you did that as a subject that was for credit points? Yes, correct. But then you also got that real world experience within a lab? Yeah, absolutely. And it was very, um, it was a great stepping stone for my honours. So my honours project was looking at um, the neurons in the stomach, so very similar. And um, that definitely helped with kind of developing some of those skills and networking um, to find an honours project that I wanted to do. 
Yeah, amazing. And if we just touch on, I think Zhu Feng just mentioned he reached out to some of his um, student colleagues. You've just mentioned they're reaching out to your lecturers to organise that research project. How did you find that experience in, term, in terms of networking with your lecturers? Were they very responsive and open to your emails just for some of our students who might be doing the same thing? Yeah, absolutely. I found they were really responsive. Um, and a lot of lecturers, um, you know, love their job because they can teach students. So any opportunity to kind of um, have extra time with students who are really interested in their work. Um, and it also gives them, I guess, an opportunity for kind of an extra pair of hands with their work. Yeah, amazing. That's fantastic to hear. Um, and Zufeng, if we just jump back over to you, you said you applied directly through Canva um, for your internship. So um, do you want to walk us through that application process and how perhaps you prepared for that and what was involved in that? Sure. So the initial application is just like a pretty much a form on the website. So you just fill that in, upload your resume and and fill in a bunch of fields. And then after that, there's like this process where it starts with a, like a phone screening interview and then later a like a technical online interview with mm -hmm. one of their actual engineers. And that would have been most of it. Yeah. As for how to prepare, at some point, like some companies will actually send you information on what you can study up on. So in this case, they sent me some like technical topics and so I could look into those. Yeah, amazing. So obviously it was quite a technical role. So you had that technical um, part of the interview as well. We have our online resources at University of Melbourne um, with Careers Online. So we have a mock um, interview practice that's available as well as some of those aptitude and psychometric testings um, that sometimes come a part of our interviews as well. So Zufeng, you're now working at Google, which sounds amazing. I would love to hear about how your internship experience at Canva um, influenced your career path and your choices to, to stay with, obviously you um, have stayed with software engineering. So how did it influence where you are currently in your career? Um, yeah, so Canva is, was definitely quite enjoyable. So yeah, being a software engineer was definitely seemed like the right choice for me. So um, although I kind of already had that impression. So it was like more of the same. Otherwise, I'd say it was just a good experience in general, very good to have on your resume, uh, just like relevant experience. So like when I first started at uni, I did actually apply for internships and other jobs uh, almost every year. But mm. in the beginning, of course, my resume was very bad. But then over time, you, you just gather experiences and stuff, and it makes your resume is better and better and also makes yourself more experienced. And yeah, Canva was great. like another another good experience. Yeah, fantastic. So you're talking about how when you start off at university, it is quite common um, for a lot of our students to not have any experience. And that's totally okay because you learn through your experiences such as internships as well as your part-time work as well. Um, and Cecile, if we would throw that question over to you, obviously you talked about your research project being very lab-based and you're now working in policy. So how did your research project um, influence you and your career choices? Um, I think in a couple of ways. So one, um, I think any experience can give you transferable skills. So even like me, if your internship or research project has nothing to do with kind of where you end up, there'll still be transferable skills that, that you learn. Um, and I think another kind of aspect to it is if I look back, I can kind of see that my um, research project was a stepping stone to get to where I am now. So as I said, my honours project was um, very much similar to the research project I did. I then worked in clinical research for a while um, and I then was able to get to kind of step into policy that way. Um, so it has kind of, it is kind of one point on a, on a longer career path. Um, yeah, and I think it also teaches you what you do and don't like about jobs. So um, you can kind of, I, I felt like I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I graduated. Um, yeah. I still don't really know if I know what I want to do. Um, but I think just trying anything you can starts to, gives you, to give you clues about what you do and don't like. 
Yeah, amazing. And I think that's, as Cecile said, it is quite common to be super unsure about what you want to do. And that's the amazing experience that internships and part-time work can bring to you. Um, you can learn whether it is for you or whether it's not for you. As you can see, Cecile's obviously ended up in quite a different area, whereas in Zufang, really enjoyed um, that. So, Cecile, maybe I'll stick with you just for a second. Um, and what advice do you have for students who may currently be applying for internships or reaching out to lecturers such as you did um, to gain this practical experience? Yeah, I think just um, being quite reflective and thinking about what you want to do for an internship and why, um, like what are the kind of skills or experiences you're hoping to get out of it um, and that might help you kind of um, choose where you want to go. Um, and then I think also just being aware of any requirements and prepared for things like, um, you know, if you're going to need to do interviews, prepared for the interviews. Um, my, I didn't have to do any kind of formal interviews. Mine was quite informal. So the preparation I did was just um, reading a bit about the research that um, the lecturers I wanted to work with did so that I could have a bit of a kind of informal chat with them about it. Yeah, amazing. And Zufang, if we throw that over to you, obviously you did have those formal interviews. You said you mentioned a phone chat first and then obviously that technical interview. Um, what type of questions did they ask you and did you have any advice for our current students who might be applying for similar things? Okay, in my case, the, tech, uh, the questions were mostly quite technical, like specific technical questions, coding-related stuff, which means you actually need to know all of that so i guess relevant subjects would be all of the pretty much all of these software subjects especially the algorithms and data structures and and like object oriented perhaps and just anything that's related to coding and then apart from that it's like whatever resources they might send you in advance so that's specific stuff to read up on also uh for these jobs you can possibly research other people who previously applied or currently applying and see what they had to go through. And that, yeah, amazing. That. Yeah, that's really good advice there. I think Zuvang mentioned before about reaching out to his networks. And when you are in university, you have a lot of um, student colleagues who may be applying for the same thing. So talking to each other and gaining that advice from each other can be really helpful. Um, Zuvang, did they ask you any behavioural questions at all about like how you worked in a team or if you had faced challenges or was it predominantly technical? In that case, it was mostly just technical. Yeah. So, same, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, same with when I applied for Google. Although nowadays, I think they have a bit more behavioral stuff, but still mostly technical. Yeah, so I just point that out because sometimes they will ask you behavioural questions even if it is a technical. I wonder, Cecile, when you interviewed for um, New South Wales Health, was there any behavioural questions or was that um, technical questions as well? No, so my experience with job interviews has been quite the opposite, so less technical questions and more asking about, um, yeah, those kind of behavioural questions. So I think it is a really good idea to look up common interview questions. I've done a lot of job interviews and most of them ask, there'll be, you know, some specific to the job, but there's quite a few questions that almost everyone asks. So things like, you know, tell me a bit about yourself, um, those kind of more generic ones. And so I think it's good to pr not prepare like a script, but just think in advance about the kinds of things you want to talk about and the kinds of things you want the interviewer to know. Um, and then the other questions that I have had in interviews is things like tell me an example of when you worked on a kind of project, what was the outcome, what did you do, or tell me about a time when you faced a particular kind of challenge can you tell me about that etc yeah wonderful so that is really good um you know comparison between our two alum today it can sometimes be very technical but often there are those behavioral um elements as well so that comes to the conclusion of my formal questions but we do have an allotted period of time for um you as our student participants today to come off mute ask some questions pop them in the chat um cecile and zufang are here to answer any questions that you might have at all um we have you know plenty of time so if there is anything that you want 
wanted to ask specifically about um, participating in an internship during your studies or a research project such as Cecile participated in, um, please feel free to pop them in the chat and we will go through them now. Um, so I've just pulled the chat up and I will keep an eye on it. Um, Daniel, were there any previously throughout the... No, great. So we don't have any um, questions in the queue, so feel free to jump in and um, be that first person to ask a question. Um, so we've just had a question here that says, Cecile, can you tell us more about your transition from research to policy? Was it a challenging process in the way of needing to convince those who make decisions that move to another area? What did you do? Good question. Um, I think I learned a lot of transferable skills in clinical research. So even though they're quite different, I still learned skills about, um, you know, kind of working with a team and those more kind of general um, workforce skills that you learn. And I did also start studying a Master of Public Health. Um, so that was kind of my, I think, my foot in the door because I was starting to get the um, knowledge and expertise that I needed. So I started studying while I was still working in clinical research um, and then just applied for lots of jobs. I applied for the first kind of relevant job I got was in consulting. Um, and so I was working with a small consultancy firm that did um, healthcare related projects. That was quite a brief um, role that I had there. And then I, um, then I got my role at New South Wales Health. Yeah, amazing. So we've just had another question pop through, um, Zufang, directed to you. So the question is, how did you build your co coding portfolio and GitHub for sof software roles? Do you have any tips on how to practice for practical coding? Um, okay, coding portfolio. I reckon just like if you have any random ideas that you're interested in, you can you can have a go at implementing it. And that's what I did. So I have a few random projects, although not too much when I applied for Canva. Um, okay, maybe I had a little bit. So just like whatever is it, whatever you're interested in, you could also just try learning random stuff, like try tutorials online, and then maybe that will inspire you to make something else as well. And then act as for practical coding questions. Uh, well, there are there are resources and sites for that. For example, there's like always like cracking the coding interview. That's a textbook. There's also Leap Code, which is pretty famous because it collects a lot of past questions from a lot of different companies. So you can use that to figure out, well, the, the exact questions for the company or just do general coding questions. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Um, we've had another question come through here that says, when handing in your resume for internships, was there anything that you would recommend that we should highlight? So, Zufeng, maybe when you applied for Canva, was there anything in particular that you highlighted on your CV? I know you mentioned that at the time of applying for internship, there wasn't a lot of experience, which is very common for all of our students. Uh, in general, well, we should highlight anything that seems relevant to the job posting, especially if it could set you apart from other people. So I, I actually got my resume from 2018 <laughs> and looking at it, it's like, yeah, mostly technical stuff. I have some work experience. I even put it in like less relevant work experience, even like non-technical stuff, because it's still like good to have the general soft skills like teamwork and all that. And then I did also participate in a lot of like hackathons and competitions related to technical stuff. Yeah, amazing. Um, and we do also have one of our career resources is your CV check. Um, you can upload it um, to have a look at it, which is a really good way to just have that first initial check of how your CV is looking. Um, so we have had another question. Um, did you complete your internship while doing other subjects? How did you manage your time? So, Cecile, your research project was a subject. So were you, um, were you also participating in other units while doing your research project? Yes, I was. So I guess I was kind of treating it um, as I would any other subject and using the same kind of strategies that had worked for me previously. I guess one difference is when you're doing a research project or an internship, um, you might have to commit, say, one day a week and you can't just not turn up, whereas, you know, when you've got exams and things coming up, so you do need to be um, 
I guess, organised with your time and plan ahead if you can see there's going to be really busy weeks with exams and assignments due um, and still needing to do your kind of um, responsibilities in the research lab. Yeah, amazing. And Zufeng, were you um, studying at the same time as your internship? I was not. I did mine as a summer internship, so no classes at the same time. It was also a full-time job. Yeah, okay, so it was a full-time internship. So I yeah. guess that highlights um, some of the different experiences that um, our students have. So you will sometimes be participating in an internship during the semester, and we do have, there are the winter and summer internships. Um, so we've had another question here for you, Cecile. Was there any specific experience they required from you when you first got your internship at the lab? So is there any practical um yeah, experience required from you before you started working in the lab? Not anything outside of um, what I'd learned in my undergraduate. So um, like any kind of lab-based subjects you've done or any subjects where there might have been some laboratory components, like even some of the core subjects um, from memory, there were still some lab-based components and that was enough. Um, it was very much well-supported um, like I was very much working with another researcher as opposed to um, my honours where I kind of had a bit more autonomy. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much. Um, we do have quite a few questions coming through. So I, if I have skipped yours, it may just be because we've asked one similar. Um, I... Zufeng, there's another question here for you um, from one of our students that's saying, what level of difficulty were the technical questions for both your interviews? Would you consider them leet code, mediums or hards? I hope I've pronounced that um, right. <laughs> yes. So for these interviews, they're not quite, they're not exactly the same as leet code. They don't, um, as in what they'll probably do is they'll give you more than one question and usually the difficulty ramps up. So it could be that they'll give you like an easy, then a medium, then a hard, and also have like other small questions in between. Yeah, amazing. But for an internship, they probably won't go super hard. So let's say medium. Yeah, and I think that's a good a, a good point from Zufeng there. When you are applying for internships and while you're studying, no one expects the world from you. They do understand that you are still a student um, and you're looking to build your practical experience through these internships. So they they don't expect you to know everything um, right away, that's for sure. Um, Cecile, we've had another question come through for you saying, what about a Masters of Public Health interested you while you were participating in clinical research? Was it based on your experiences in clinic research or outside interests? Um, it was probably more outside interest. So I think when um, working in clinical research, I kind of realised it was not what I wanted to do. Um, so I was thinking about what, um, you know, what I did like about research was more the kind of working with people and the practical aspects of it as opposed to the actual kind of lab-based, um, really researchy parts of it. So that's why I thought policy would be um, a more kind of um, interesting space for me to be in. And I also, the thing that really appealed to me about it is that you really have um, the potential to impact and enact change um, at scale so like you can you will get opportunities to have real impact at population health levels um, whereas research felt like um, the impact was a lot kind of smaller and um, really long term like research you kind of don't see the fruits of your labor until many many years later whereas public health um, you can kind of change policy and you see the changes. Yeah, amazing. I think that's a really good perspective on just figuring out what works for you in your work. Um, we've had quite a few questions come through just about networking. Um, a few people asking, what would you say is the best way to reach out and build networks? Um, Cecile, you obviously touched on reaching out to your lecturers. Um, we've had a question similarly that says, when inquiring into internships that aren't officially advertised, e.g. as you reached out to your lecturers, how did you start this conversation? So maybe if you can just touch a little bit on how you started those conversations a practical um advice for our students sure so i think um to start those conversations i would say you know hi i'm a student i really enjoyed your 
lectures on X, Y, Z for these reasons. I'm really, I've noticed you do research in these areas, which I'm really interested in. Um, and I think explaining why, why you want to work with them specifically um, and highlighting that, yeah, you've, you're a student of theirs and you really enjoyed their work. Yeah, great. So that's some really practical advice there of just starting that conversation with lecturers. And as Zhu Feng said, he spoke to some of his um, student colleagues as well. So having those casual conversations um, can be a really great way to kick those off. Um, just conscious of time, we do have five minutes left, so I will try to get through a few more of your questions. Um, we've had a few questions around what do inter internships expect from me? How can I stand out on my CV? Um, and equally, do you have any suggestions for freshmen about what kind of company to choose? Because I don't have a lot of knowledge and skills currently. So, Zhu Feng, when you were studying and you decided to apply for your internship at Canva, um, how did you go about wanting to decide where to work? Um, I feel like it's also important to not be too picky, especially if you don't have much experience. Like for all the jobs that I did get, there were a lot of like failed applications. So that's, mm. that's very important. So for me in general, just like software development would be good. So anything that offers that, apply for it. And you can cast your net pretty wide. And because also like failed applications will you'll probably learn something from them and then it'll, they'll help make your future applications better. So yeah, that's, don't be too yeah that's really great advice from Zhu Feng. Um, like he said, for the many approvals, there are also all, always rejections as well. Um, and as he said, you can learn from those. Um, so we might just do one last question because we do have a couple of more slides to go through. Um, so we might just touch base back on that. How can I showcase my uniqueness and catch the employer's attention? Um, Cecile, did you have any tips or tricks that you pop on your CV or perhaps your cover letter as well um, to make yourself stand out from the crowd? Um, I think with a cover letter, I've had quite good feedback from being quite um, like a bit more personalised and um, honest about why I want to work there instead of giving like a really generic kind of answer. Um, I think that people respond better to that. And then I think for a CV, um, looking at either the inter if it's an internship or a job, looking at the requirements and making sure your CV kind of addresses the things that they're looking for and using keywords that they've used. Um, that's worked well for me in the past. Yeah, amazing. I think that's great advice, as Sil said. Um, making sure that you tailor your cover letters to what you're applying for and have a look at the skills that they are after. Um, I'll just bring our question time to a close there. We just have a few minutes left and a couple more slides to get through. Um, I am conscious that there were a few that we didn't touch on, but please remember that you always have access to our Ask Alumni network and Zhu Feng is one of our Ask Alumni mentors. So you can always jump on, create a mentee profile and search for your for alumni in areas that you're interested in to ask these types of questions that you're interested in. I do want to point out that there is more from our internship and job series coming up. So next week on the Tuesday, we have our internships and jobs fair where you can come and meet employers, gain insights into opportunities and build connections. So you might be able to do some of that networking that Cecile was talking about. And then we also have a few more online webinars that might be of interest to you. Example, how to apply for an internship and how to stand out in internship interviews, which we did touch on a couple of times um, today as well. So here on the screen, I have the link to our Ask Alumni, which I was just mentioning. So the program is available to all of you as university students. And as I said, it can help connect you with graduates from around the world and explore potential career paths and get insights into organisational culture. So if you do have those burning questions, such as the ones you've been asking Cecile and Zhu Feng today, I highly recommend that you jump online and create a mentee profile and you can search for alumni that have um, experience in in your particular areas and then down on the bottom of the screen are some of those resources that I touched on throughout our presentation that are always available to you as students. We've got our Employ Me, the Smart Resume tool that I was touching on before, Careers Online and of course our LMS community which does have a particular module for preparing for internships.
Um, equally, uh, one of our other career um, resources is your career advice appointments that you have access to. So we always have drop-in slash zoom-in sessions with our career advisors and student peer leaders, uh, one-on-one careers appointments where you can come in and chat with one of our careers advisors to help talk about your future. And you always have the ability to submit um a career question online as well. So they are just some of the tools that you have available while you're at the university. But as I said, if you have those burning questions, definitely jump on to Ask Alumni um, and connect with some of our amazing alumni that are, you know, from all across the world. So that brings our presentation to a close today. I want to say thank you so much to our two alumni for participating in today's um, panel. Cecile and Zufang, it's been so lovely to speak to you. Um, and thank you for sharing your critical insights with our students. Thank you for having us. And thanks for everyone um, asking great questions. Yep, thanks too. I'll just plug in oh, this extra piece of advice there. but. Right. Which Thanks is, so uh, much for that, Zufang. Did you want to touch on that really quickly? Oh, yeah, sure. Basically, I didn't say it before, but definitely join clubs relevant to, to your course and career interests. Like CISA was great, the computing club, because that's how I connect with other students. Mm. And they also have industry connections because so then employers can come and you can learn about the opportunities. And also they organize like competitions and extra events. So that's how that's a way to stand out apart from just doing your coursework. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. That's some great advice. So thank you again to both of you. Um, we will end the meeting here. And as I said to anyone, make sure to jump on Ask Alumni if you have any more of those burning questions. All right. Thanks, guys.